Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. The single best idea, and we're careful here in the last number of days, some real conversation among the team about getting the right guess on the news in the eastern Mediterranean over to Tehran. Uh, we're really working at not getting pundits and what's it mean for the election and that, but just people that are steeped in the region and that have experience as well. Robert D. Kaplan uh, has been affiliated with Brookings. He was a Eurasia group uh, with Ian Bremmer, and he is absolutely definitive with a series of books. I'm going to say 10 books, which is basically get out the map and go. And that has been his esteemed career. Whether you agree or disagree with him, he gets out the map and he goes. He visits, he fi- he parachutes in to troubled regions across all of the globe. His uh, The Loom of Time was my book of the year last year. It's just spectacular going from Morocco and Gibraltar all the way over to the Fertile Crescent. Uh, he has a new effort. I, I really want to emphasize I've never done this before. It's almost an election book. It's 115 pages, warning it's dense. No mathematics, but a lot of dense thinking, taking us from the Greeks forward to how we think today. It is the tragic mind, fear, fate, and the burden of power. Robert T. Kaplan can't say enough about this uh, effort. He visited with us this morning, Robert T. Kaplan, on how to end the tragedy of the Eastern Mediterranean. I think the fate of the Eastern Mediterranean is that we will be in this cycle of wars, ceasefires, negotiations, until there is a domestic change in the regime inside Iran. Remember, the Cold War ended not because of a battle was won or any anything international. It ended for it because of a domestic reason. The Soviet system collapsed. And I think at some point, the regime in Iran will transform, transition, or collapse on its own, not from an invasion or anything. Right. And and at that point, the whole Middle East will be different. You'll see diplomatic relations between Iran and Israel, lots of other big changes. But right. the, the key thing to watch here is that if the Israeli attack can do something, that will the Israeli counterattack can do something that will seriously embarrass the regime in Tehran in the minds of its own people. We continue with Robert T. Kapp on a theme that we've had over the last number of days of looking at Israel, their modern politics versus the time. Of Yitzhak Rabin. Yitzhak Rabin, first of all, would not be the leader of such a right-wing, extreme Israeli government. Um, Yitzhak Rabin um, was comfortable negotiating with people who, frankly, uh, with, frankly, with Americans who, frankly, were much smarter than the Biden administration. Um, the Biden. Uh, President Biden made a big mistake in the last 48 hours. He um, he said publicly that Israel should not attack the Iranian nuclear facilities. That's something you communicate privately, not publicly, because you should never tell your enemy what you're not going to do. Never take anything off the table. Yitzhak Rabin mm-hmm. was a really wily operator. Um, and I think now... Um, He's, you know, given this situation right at this moment, Yitzhak Rabin would hit Iran very hard. So yeah. though Rabin and Netanyahu are from two opposite ends of the political spectrum in Israel, at this moment yeah. they would be, they, they, this, you know, they would be aligned. Robert Kaplan, and again, I can't say enough about the tragic mind, fear, fate, and the burden of power. It's what I'm reading right now. Got to slip this in. It's too important. Nathan Sheets with us from Citigroup today. He's really good at really high-level reports on where we are and what we don't know. Into Jobs Day tomorrow, Nathan Sheets on the strangeness of our productivity. I think at the moment we're seeing very strong productivity growth. Again, I'm I'm interpreting that as post-pandemic kind of cyclical adjustment. But nevertheless, Mm -hmm. underneath that, I am a productivity bull. 
I think this new AI technology that's being developed is fundamental. And I think that uh, out, uh, you know, three, five, seven years, we are likely in the United States and over time globally to have a, a significant productivity dividend right. on the order of what we saw with the integration of the internet in the late 90s. So hmm. I am right. bullish. I think that AI is the real deal. Nathan Sheets of Citigroup there, and of course a good overlay into the mysteries of 8.30 tomorrow morning. We'll go beneath the headline data. Michael McKee leading our coverage there of a hugely anticipated jobs report. We're on YouTube. Subscribe to Bloomberg Podcasts. On your commute, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Along the corridor, 92.9 FM, Boston, 99.1 Washington. Our flagship, Bloomberg 1130 in New York City, where the Mets play tonight. This is Single Best Idea. <laughs>